Hi, Arabic learners. It's me again, Lubna. Welcome to the lesson number two about Arabic diacritics, a tashkil and vowel system. Arabic diacritical marks are optional in Arabic, so that when you're walking around in Arabic streets and catch a glimpse on the store's advertising boards, you can read Arabic without diacritics. It is essential for beginners when reading Arabic, but once you master the language, you, we would leave the diacritical marks behind and depend on yourself, I hope. It is also important for reading religious texts. For example, the Quran has tashkil to guarantee a correct reading because incorrect reading results on a wrong understanding and mistakes are not acceptable in Quran. Let me explain myself further. We have three examples here. Three words. I wrote them twice. Why? We'll see. They look similar. No difference. But if we start marking them with the short vowels, which we will talk about in a minute. Qasama. I used Fatha here. Qasama, it means divide. What about the second one? Qismun. It means a classroom. So the first one, Qasama, it's dividing, to divide. Qismun, it's a classroom. Second one, Darasa. Darasa. Darasa, it means to study. The second one, Darsun. It's a lesson. So, Darasa is to study. Darsun, it's a lesson. Third one, Kataba. The first letter, Kaf, it's this one, but it's written differently. Kaf, it may be uh, written this way if it's in the end. For example, in the word Deek, rooster. Deek. We may write it this way or the way I wrote it initially. Deek. But I cannot write kataba this way. Ka ta ba. That's incorrect. It's good to know. So let's mark kataba. Kataba. It's to write. Ku tu bun. Books. I hope you understand me. So we have three short vowels which enable the letter to make a sound in a similar way to the English language. Fatha. Fatha. It's a small diagonal line that is placed above a letter and represents the short a in English like accept, apple, admit. And the meaning of fatha is an opening because when you pronounce the short vowel a, fatha, like ba, ta, da, ra, you're opening your mouth. The second one, kasra, kasra is similar to Fatha, but it's placed under the letter and it refers to a short sound of E, 
in English like sit, fit, did, bit. And the meaning of kasra is breaking. So you break the sound from ba, bi, ti, di, ri, ai, dhamma. Dhamma, it looks like a little wow. It's an apostrophe like a shape. And it sits on top of the letter and uh, it has the short sound of U or O in English, like book or um, put. And the meaning of Dhamma, it's closing, a closing, because you join your lips when you pronounce it, like Bu, Tu, Ru, uh, Zu, like these short vowels, sukun, which is stillness, and once it's placed on a letter, it should not have any sound pronounced, because the letter has to be static, sukun, like b, t, no short vowel, uh, comes after the pronunciation. It's not like B or T or T, it's B, R, H, Z. And these uh, short vowels uh, match the long vowels because where if uh, we use Fatha, and we want to elongate the sound of this short vowel, we have to use alif as a long vowel. So we have three long vowels, alif, wow, yeah. And don't be confused with um, of, uh, long vowels and the consonants. We can never start a word with the long vowels because they don't carry any mark they are lazy they just lengthen the sound of the short vowel for alif if you notice in the alphabet that alif comes with a hat on top of it this hat is called hamza and this Hamza may stand by itself in a word. It may be even considered as a consonant. Like ma, ma, it means water, ma. It comes by itself. But when we start a, a, a word with it, it needs a support. Like Ahmed, it's an Arabic name, Ahmed. It needs a support, but we cannot write alif without nothing, and we cannot even mark on it because it's a long vowel. We cannot pronounce this. So, whenever we have fatha followed by alif. We have the long sound, ah, like father. Let's check the word bab, which means door. So, fatha is the start, and when it's followed by alif, it's long, ba. It's no more ba. Bab. If I write it without the alif, the long vowel, it will be bab. What about the letter lam, la, la? How do we extend the sound of la? So with fatha, we put it diagonally, la, or 
it may be written this way. La, la, it means no. Kasra, kasra. If ya is preceded by kasra, we would have the long vowel e, like dear, for example. Let's use hamza. E. Hamza may be placed in the bottom with the kasra, e, and let's extend it with ya, e. This is the way we extend hamza, not alif, hamza, e, ma. Let's extend the mim, ma. So, uh, Fatha has to be followed by Alif. Man. Iman. Iman means believe. And the last one, it's wow. Wow matches the Dhamma. So, the short vowel Dhamma. For example, in the word busy, mashhul, mashhul, it's mim, ma, shin, sh, with sukun, sh, ru, we need damma, so and if it's followed by Wow, it means a long vowel, mashrool, which means busy. Mashhoor, ma, sh, hoor, again the ma, wow, it's long, hoor. So now you know the alphabet, you know the vowels, so you can start writing and reading. And that's it for today. Ma'as